young girl crying after losing her parents at a host club called the Showtime in Shibuya. The girl is comforted by the number one host of the club, Sho. However, Sho is interrupted by a subordinate to attend a meeting with a client. In reality, Sho and the club employees are trying to defend their area from the ramp and zombie invasion in Shibuya. Meanwhile, Akira, who has arrived in Shibuya on a motorcycle he obtained earlier, is searching for his college friend named Kenikiro, who is still alive. A few hours earlier, Akira, feeling bored, is seen doodling on his chin with a marker to create a fake beard and looks at himself in the mirror. However, he gives up on the idea, finding it too ridiculous. As he contemplates what to do for the day, Akira's smartphone suddenly receives a notification, indicating that the internet connection is back. He attempts to contact anyone from his contacts, hoping that there might be a surviving friend or relative. Akira immediately remembers his college friend and former rugby teammate named Ryusuke Kenikiro, also known as Kencho, and contacts him right away because he believes Kencho wouldn't die easily. Kencho, half-conscious due to not eating for three days and trapped in a love hotel themed around San, is unable to escape easily due to the large number of zombies roaming the hotel. Akira inquires about his condition and the situation there and decides to head to Shibuya without hesitation. He asks Kencho to send him his current location. Akira and Kencho were close friends during college, as they were both part of the rugby club. Kencho was always the one who liked the mood when things got stressful and his athletic body always attracted women on their campus. Akira knows this well, because Kencho was his closest friend during college, and it's natural for him to worry about Kencho being stuck in Shibuya now. During a drinking session last year, Akira became annoyed with Kencho for constantly showing off. The stark difference in their occupations offended him when he was drunk. Shu, who was left alone to protect his host club, had resigned himself to the fact that all of his employees had turned into zombies. Feeling exhausted and purposeless, he chose to accept being devoured by zombies rather than staying alive but alone. However, just as a zombie was about to bite him, a loud car horn suddenly sounded, diverting the attention of the approaching zombie. Shu felt saved, realizing that someone else was still alive and had tried to help him by luring the zombies away with a car horn sound. Akira, who had been hiding in a small pond in front of the hotel where Kencho was staying, finally managed to enter the hotel to find the room where Kencho currently resided. Meanwhile, Kencho, now conscious that there were no more zombies outside his room, tried to figure out what had actually happened. Akira spotted Kencho from a distance and attempted to pat him on the back from behind. However, Kencho was startled and screamed, but upon hearing Akira's voice, he realized it was his friend and stopped running. He couldn't believe that Akira was still alive, having managed to survive alone in the midst of the widespread zombie invasion. Akira then apologized to Kencho for not heeding his advice while crying, feeling ashamed that he hadn't taken his friend's suggestions seriously. He was particularly upset about the stories Kencho used to tell, which made him envious. Suddenly, without any warning, the zombie horde began to return to the hotel and immediately targeted Akira and Kencho, who were still inside. Without hesitation, they ran to the rooftop to escape. However, Kencho forgot to close the door, and the zombie horde held onto it, preventing it from closing. As Kencho struggled to hold the door, Akira helped by using a large AC exhaust fan to keep the zombies from breaking through. Akira had already assessed the surroundings and was prepared to jump to the adjacent building once the door's barrier was breached. Kencho was baffled by Akira's reasoning, finding it beyond comprehension that Akira was pushing himself so hard without any fear of getting hurt. Without further delay, Akira readied himself to make a running jump to the next building, and with determination, he managed to land on the adjacent rooftop, but not without blood dripping from his forehead due to the effort. Kencho, finding Akira's idea extremely reckless, was initially hesitant to jump, as he was terrified after looking down from the hotel. Kencho was extremely scared, so much so that he preferred being eaten by zombies rather than making the jump. His reason was that he hadn't told Akira about his true job before being attacked by zombies. The pressure of dealing with clients and having to fake smiles all the time to secure contracts through deception made him indifferent to praise from his superiors, the company, and even his girlfriend, 
who happened to be a model. Even moments spent dining with politicians and famous athletes didn't bring him any joy. All he felt was a profound sense of discontent. Kensho believed he needed to fill the void in his heart by showcasing his possessions to gain attention, make others envious, or simply impress them. Feeling remorseful, Kensho cried and apologized to Akira, realizing that he had only been showing off his achievements while being unaware of Akira's struggles due to his own job. Akira knew Kensho well and preferred seeing him use his self-confidence to pursue a career that could entertain people genuinely. Acknowledging Akira's advice, Kensho made up his mind to work towards genuinely bringing happiness to others. As Kensho aspired to become a comedian, Akira immediately suggested quitting his current job and pursuing a career in comedy. Kensho believed it was the right decision, trusting the advice of his own best friend, and followed Akira by jumping to the building where he was waiting. As Kensho prepared to leap from the hotel rooftop, they were faced with the horde of zombies breaking through the door, which was barricaded with various items. Realizing that the zombies could catch up to him, without hesitation, Kensho ran, leapt towards Akira, and shed all his clothes, striking a pose that made Akira burst into uncontrollable laughter. However, during the landing, Kensho didn't jump far enough, and he almost fell, managing to cling to the edge of the building wall. His grip weakened, and he was about to fall when Akira rushed to save him. Kensho was terrified, as falling meant certain death, and he was left entirely exposed. While Akira initially thought Kensho might have been bitten by a zombie due to his injuries, Kensho clarified that his genitals were just scraped from the fall. The night in Shibuya felt different for Akira as he was able to reunite with his friend, still alive. Kensho also shared the same sentiment, knowing that Akira must have survived. They enjoyed beer and food they took from the nearest supermarket to their hiding spot. Kensho shared that his comedic spirit had been reignited, feeling grateful to meet Akira again. He understood that their jokes were often about nudity but still felt thankful for being able to enjoy a drink while half-naked on the rooftop as their clothes were drying, and they hadn't found replacements yet. Kensho truly empathized with what Akira had experienced before, quitting his previous job and embarking on an uncertain new life. He sought advice from Akira who had previously worked behind the scenes in television production. While Akira boastfully downplayed the nature of his job during those dark three years, Kensho, knowing the reality of Akira's near-death experience, considered him more than just a zombie. Reflecting on those who left their jobs to start anew, Kensho believed they often found success, becoming entrepreneurs or public figures. He hoped that Akira, who shared a similar fate, might suddenly become a savior in this world plagued by the zombie virus. Even though Akira might not be able to create a vaccine, at least his actions of searching for survivors, even knowing it might be impossible, could offer some hope. They spent the night conversing extensively until eventually dozing off on the rooftop. Their journey together had just begun, and they wondered what would happen next. Meeting Kensho might lead Akira to search for other survivors and collaborate with them to find any form of help to escape from the ever-expanding and uncontrollable zombie-infested area. Would Akira also be able to reunite with the woman he encountered before?